hello. Hello, hello, hello. I'm just checking if you guys can hear me. Hello and welcome. So just go ahead and um, give me some reactions, some thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, let me see your reactions. Awesome. Uh, I'm still setting up a little bit. You guys will have to forgive me. I am one of the most technologically challenged people that you will ever come across. <laughs> but... Uh Doesn't that Louis can hear you very well? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hi there. Awesome. I'm one of the most technologically uh, challenged people that you will ever come across, but I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to make sure I can share my screen so that I can share my PowerPoint with you guys. And we're just going to give uh, uh, the rest of the group some time to come in. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys to mute your, uh, your volume because there's going to be quite a bit of us here. Um, I'm going to present a, a, a PowerPoint and I'm going to explain some things to you and uh, feel free to note down some questions because at the end I have made time to answer some of your questions. So um, I'm glad to see you all here. Give me two minutes while this computer challenged person tries to set up <laughs> my PowerPoint. Give me two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you guys here. Um, I think All right. Are you guys seeing my PowerPoint here? Yes, we can yes. see it. Okay. Yes, great. we can see it. Now I just need to figure out how to maximize. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. Um right. Uh huh. okay, okay, okay. I can coach you in everything, guys, except computers. It won't work. It can't. It's like, you know. Grade two maths, uh, five divided by 10, it can't, okay? So everything else I can, <laughs> I can go to, but computers, I have a guy who actually does this for me, but uh, he works remotely. And the problem is, since he's working remotely, uh, he's not here right now. Unless he's here. El Nathan, are you here? If you're here, come and save me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just have to figure it out as we go, okay? But I have the PowerPoint. Uh, uh, maximize, how do I do that? <gasps> I did it, okay, great. <laughs> we got it, <laughs> awesome. So now I'm just going to wait for a few more people to come in, in. come on in. Um, while we're waiting, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Mary Razemba. I am the founder of uh, maryrazemba.com. So I have been in Europe ever since I was 21, which is an odd 16, almost 17 years ago. Um, and I will tell you a little bit more about my journey and how I got to where I am uh, today. Uh, today, I am in Belgium. Um, I am a coach. Uh, at the same time, I run a nursing practice. Um, so healthcare is my, my home. 
but because I am Zimbabwean and uh, I know that strong desire that we have as Zimbabweans to uh, search for better postures and to improve ourselves and improve our lives, I set up this coaching practice so that I can support fellow immigrants on their journey uh, to these uh, better opportunities and um, uh, to greener postures. Um, I've been doing this coaching for almost uh, uh, three years now, four years now, um, but I officially started and registered my coaching practice and company here in Belgium um, a year ago. Uh, about 18 months ago. And ever since then, it's just been growing and growing. So obviously, there is a big demand for um, skills, uh, African talent in this part of the world, and not just in this part of the world, but I think on a global level. Um, I'm just going to keep my time. And it's seven o'clock now. Um, <clears throat> so I think we will just start uh, this is one of those principles that I insist on because <laughs> uh, in other countries, they're not going to, they don't work on African time. So if it's seven o'clock, it's seven o'clock and we have to go. Let's start. Okay. Right. Uh, just some thumbs up again. If you can see my PowerPoint, some thumbs up in the chat, chat section, if you can see the PowerPoint and if you can hear me if everything is good to go so we can get started. Um, again, I'm going to ask you guys to mute your uh, microphones, uh, have a pen and paper down so that you can write down your questions and we will, um, I will give you guys a question and answer segment at the end of the presentation. Awesome, I think we're ready to go. Okay, so welcome to the departure lounge and the departure lounge, like I said, this is the brainchild of, uh, of, of seeing that people were in need of uh, safe and legal routes to migrate uh, out of uh, Zimbabwe. And I will tell you, it breaks my heart because a lot of people are skilled and they are qualified in many different ways, but it breaks my heart uh, that a lot of people believe that the only way you can migrate is if you start by doing a menial job. It's absolutely not true. Uh, especially if you're educated. And this is why I designed uh, the Departure Lounge. So we're going to start off with uh, summing up the reason why people migrate. Um, now, a, 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 a German psychologist, a sociologist called uh, Maslow, uh, he came up with a hierarchy of needs and um, Basically, it sums up the reason why we do the things that we do. Uh, each and every one of us is kind of in search of their best version of themselves. That's the reason why we're here on this planet. And that's what we're doing continuously when from the moment that we are born until the day that we die, we're trying to fulfill our biggest and our best, uh, the best version of ourselves. And this is the top of the pyramid, the self actualization, which is the desire to become the best, the most one can be. And when we look at migration, um, the f when you're looking to migrate, I think the biggest driving factor uh, is probably your motivation. It's probably your fulfilling each and every one of these needs. Uh, think individually, if we can uh, kind of um, reflect, you'll find that you're trying to fulfill your physiological needs, the basic needs, uh, food, shelter, uh, warmth, you know, and the safety needs, personal security, employment, uh, resources, health, uh, and property. I'm sorry about that. I have no idea what happened, but we're back. Um, so I was saying, I'm going to reshare my screen and then we can just pick up from where we left off. Uh, just a second. Let's hope that the internet, uh, which is very strange, my internet is usually very good, but uh, for some reason uh, it's not playing nice today. No worries, let's try again. Okay. 
I hope you guys can see my PowerPoint. Thumbs up again if you can see my PowerPoint. All right, great. Okay, yes. so I was saying this is the reason why the motivation behind why most people will seek to migrate. So it's actually a journey to fulfilling the best version of yourself and fulfilling each and every one of these needs. So uh, I have noticed in the 16 years that I have been an immigrant myself that most people pursue uh, three main routes of, uh, of migration, three main routes as their journeys to uh, the first world. And the first one is uh, family reunion. A lot of people um, move from Zimbabwe or from out of Africa to join their families uh, who are already established there. And that's one of the easiest ways to migrate if you already have strong um, family ties with somebody who is established in the first world. Not every one of us have this. And in some cases, we're looking to become the first family member who will be able to bring across other people. Uh, the second one is the educational route. And this is the route that I personally followed. Um, um, I came to I, I came to Europe as a, a student. I received a scholarship, and I came to Europe as a student, and I studied, um, and that's how I, I I found my way to establishing myself. Hi, David. Uh, I can see your hand is up. Um, I will take a breather in between my PowerPoints at some point so that you guys can ask a few questions. If you just, if you don't mind writing it down and then we'll, when I give you guys a moment, you guys can uh, ask some questions in that time. Okay, so that's the family reunion route and the education route. Uh, the final one and the reason why we're all here, I'm guessing today is the employment route and the employment route presents the highest level of fulfillment uh, for immigrants uh, and why it breaks down to um, the fulfilling all those needs in the in the hierarchy of needs that was presented by Maslow. If you think about yourself, why do you want to migrate? Why do you want to go to a different country? And point by point, you're looking to fulfill a certain need, whether it's uh, basic needs, whether it's health, whether it's uh, belonging or feeling like you, you make a difference uh, in, in, in or an, an impact in this world. All of these one for one, uh, you can name them as reasons and motivations to migrate. Right, that being said, uh, we're looking to make the right decision for your migration, but how do you choose which pathway is best for you? Uh, we've talked about three pathways. Uh, we talked about the family reunion route, and I think that one would be best if you already have a partner who is established in this for in a foreign country and then there is the educational route that one would be appealing if you are looking to pursue a bachelor's or master's or even a phd um, and ideally i think this is for somebody who doesn't have a lot of responsibilities but most of us are looking to fulfill uh, a migrational route using the employment route okay so this is what i've just said um, depending on what your goal uh, in life is what your goal of uh, or 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 uh, the motivation behind your uh, your migration. Now, how do you how your migration profile affects your empl employability? So, if you followed me, I talk about a migration profile, um, and there are certain things that come up. Uh, which I call uh, factors that will influence your employability and the likelihood that you will be accepted to, to, to migrate, you, the likelihood that you will be granted a visa, the likelihood that you will be granted a job opportunity. And these are the factors. Uh, age. Um, for most countries, they use a point system and the number of points that you have is dependent on uh, these factors here that we use in our migration profile. So the maximum number of points is between 25 and 35 years. And in some countries, it's between 18 and 25 and 35 years, which means by the time you are 18, uh, countries are looking at you and thinking, oh, wow, this is a great person to migrate. 
why? Because you have such a long career ahead of you between these years. Uh, the average um, uh, age for uh, retirement in the Western world is 65 or 67 years. And so when you're 35, you still have half of your life literally to work. Um, the number of points that you have reduces after the age of 35 and even more so, I think the countries like Canada, uh, once you are 40 uh, or 45, actually, you have zero points, which means they are not going to uh, grant you a visa, no matter what the other, um, the other uh, uh, aspects look like. Uh, educational level is a very important one because this is the basis of your employability. So do you have a postgraduate diploma? Do you have uh, what they call an associate degree, higher national degree? Do you have a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree? The maximum number of points are for, depending on the sector, are for people with a master's and a PhD. Uh, understand that this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a PhD in order to be able to migrate using the employment route. Uh, the next thing is experience, and experience is a key, uh, a key factor, especially for people who are in healthcare, because um, while uh, the degree is very valid, and it holds water, uh, your experience is actually what carries more weight in the healthcare sector. So uh, for some, you'll find that this, uh, the number of, 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 of uh, years of experience varies from country to country, but a minimum of three years, between one and three years, depending on the country is necessary in the, sec in the sector for you to get the maximum number of points. Your earning potential, this is important, especially when we're looking at uh, your marital status. So if you are um, married with, let's say, two kids, uh, how much you earn, they want to look at the probability of, will you be able to sustain yourself and your family uh, with the amount of money that you will earn? Should we allow you to enter the country to, uh, to work uh, under these visas? Uh, your spouse's level of education while this is not a hindrance factor, uh, at the end of the day, it poses, it's, it's a plus. So if your spouse has also a higher national diploma in a critical skill or a shortage skill um, up to masters, this will only serve to support your, uh, your visa um, application and the number of dependents that you have. Logically, this works hand in hand with your earning potential. The more number, the more children that you have, uh, it's, yeah, the, um, the lower the amount of, uh, that is available per dependent uh, from your income. I hope this is clear. So when we're deciding on a destination, uh, I think it's very important to take into consideration these three factors. These are factors that have an, uh, that are on the Maslow's um, uh, hierarchy of needs, and they're important because, for example, your emotional needs. Do you have family there where you're deciding to go? Uh, do you have friends? Will you have a, a degree of acceptance? And when I say acceptance, understand that as Black people, um, there are some countries that are very hostile to people of our skin color. Uh, so when, you, when your deciding factor is not really out of desperation, but out of where can I make the best life for myself, this is something that you want to keep in the back of your mind and think about when you're making a decision about where exactly it is that you want to go. Your safety needs, uh, low crime rates, uh, uh, whether you your job is uh, secured there, whether the job of your partner is secured there, is the healthcare affordable uh, in the event that you need uh, emergency healthcare or something uh, uh, drastic happens? Uh, is it possible for you to get the care that you need and is it affordable? And of course, your physiological needs, your housing and the cost of living. These are some of the factors that you want to have a look at while you are migrating. Now, this is pretty important, guys. So when we are creating a migration strategy, um, there are two types of countries, okay? 
Um, they are visa-first migration countries and they are job-first migration countries. A visa-first migration country is like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. Um, in the sense that they will assess your points first and see if you are eligible for a visa before you can apply for a job. I hope this is clear. So first of all, they want to check, uh, what is your age? What is your qualification? What is the qualification of your spouse? How many years experience do you have? And based on these points, they can kind of judge whether uh, migrating to their country will be a good fit or not. Uh, on the other hand, job first migration countries, UK is on both of these, by the way, because you can, uh, you can migrate in both ways to the UK. Uh, the UK, the, the European Union nations and America, they, they champion for a job first. So you have to have a, a contract first. And once the contract is in place, then your employer is going to make sure that you have your documents and he's going to run around and make sure that you have your visa and everything else kind of falls into place after that fact. So this is kind of the basis of your strategy. So we said, number one, we're going to look at our motivation. What is your driving factor? Number two, we're going to uh, uh, kind of have a look at uh, which are the countries that you want to go to and the motivation for these countries that you're going to go to. And then based on the fact that they are visa first or migration first, this kind of, kind of spearheads your strategy. If your strategy is to go to Canada, then you're, you're looking at how do I make myself a good candidate? Am I a good candidate? And you get that answer pretty quickly when you go to their websites to register. So how do, I am listing the top part of this, so how do, uh, how does it work? So governments in the first world are looking for people who, who will migrate, hold on, I can't see this. Okay, who will be an asset to their economies and nations. Uh, through profiling in the, point, in the form of a point system, they are targeting young people that will be assets to their economies by providing them an opportunity to live and work in their countries should they meet the criteria. This is the point system that we are talking about. It's a point, it's a form of targeted migration, but this simply means that the jobs are available. And I have some statistics um, to share with you just to prove that the, the jobs are available. So whether it's a job country, whether a country has a job first visa or a visa first migration policy, uh, the job is pivotal in assessing the opportunities. So this is a fact. At the end of the day, you cannot migrate just to go and, uh, what's the word? It's not going to work. You're going to have to find a job. They want you, they want to know what exactly is it that you're going to do based on the qualifications that you have, right? So here are some statistics that you can ponder. And this is where I want you guys to see the opportunity that lies here. And these statistics are based on just the first few months of this year. Believe it or not, the USA had a labor deficit at the moment of 11,3 million jobs in January of 2020. Canada uh, reported 1.8 million vac uh, of, of vacancies and shortages in shortage occupations in March of 22. And the Netherlands has a shortfall. The Netherlands, which is just one of the smallest countries in Europe, has a shortfall of 600,000 skilled employees uh, as of April uh, 2022. And meanwhile, Australia, um, Australia has 85% of businesses and industries shortages in February of 2022. Okay. Um, you'll understand that there are a lot of job opportunities out there. But why are you guys being overlooked? Why are we as Africans being overlooked? I've heard a lot of stories of people who uh, come to me and they say, I've been applying and applying and I never get a response or I, I always get rejections. If you're lucky, they will send you a rejection letter. But a lot of the times they just don't respond. Um, I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones, please. For the sake of 
fluid communication. Thank you. So um, how do you avoid being overlooked? And this is where the departure lounge comes in. So the departure lounge coaching pro, uh, program uh, is going to equip you with a set of skills. We are looking at clarity, which is basically defining which country best suits your profile and uh, your goals. For example, like what we talked about, your motivation to migrate and which country would be a better fit for you given your circumstances and your profile. The second thing we're going to look at is communication. Now, I know it sounds like it's a no brainer, right? But um, there is definitely a disconnect in how we communicate uh, on an African scale and how the first world communicates. I'll give you a silly example. Um, if you go to an interview uh, or you're applying for a job, it's common that in Africa, you will say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, or, um, or, or not look at them in their eyes because you don't want to be intimidating or because our culture kind of tells us that you don't look at respectful people in their eyes. But this is a disconnect when you're talking about Europeans or to the first world. If you don't look at them in their eye, it's disrespectful. It's, it's, it's disrespectful or it says, I don't believe in myself. Uh, if you call me ma'am or, or sir, uh, I'm going to be a little bit shocked because we don't use those terms on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the way we write emails, even to the extent of asking for a raise or negotiating salaries, these are important key aspects of communication <laughs> that we need to learn and employ uh, in order to catch people's attention. Understand that if you are a quality candidate and the job re demands that you get paid uh, 50,000 per year, and you say, oh, well, I wouldn't mind even if you gave it to me for 20, they're not going to take you seriously. All automatically alarm bells go off like, okay, what's going on? Why, why are they selling themselves short? Another thing is social selling, which is basically, how do you market yourself? What brand, what is your brand? What do you represent? And how do you come across to, uh, to people, to these recruiters? Um, understand that at the end of the day, you are marketing yourself. You are a commodity that you're willing, what you're, that you're trying to sell on an employment market, on the, on the labor market. How do you present this commodity? And we will show you how to present and how to package yourself in a way that is attractive. When it comes to documents, we're not just talking about uh, CVs, types of CVs, uh, resumes, um, motivational letters, but we're also talking uh, visa documents, visa uh, filling in forms for your family to be able to migrate with them. Um, and so, so these documents that come into place and into play when you are trying to migrate. And the last is interview skills and not just job interview skills, but also visa interview skills. These are the components of the departure lounge. So what's missing? Why are we being overlooked? It breaks down to visibility. They can't see us. They can't hear us. Uh, why? Because sometimes our strategy is misplaced. Like I said, uh, a misconception of how you should break into the job market. We're going to start with the lowest job as possible as long as I get into that country, as long as I get a visa, that's the wrong kind of thinking. Or uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, use my, uh, the, the, the set, the sets, what are they called? The templates of the communication that I learned when I went to uh, high school in Africa. That's the wrong, that's the wrong strategy as well as your branding. How do you present yourself? What do you look like on camera? What do you look like while you're on social media? Very important, by the way, because no matter who you are, the company is going to Google you. If they're serious about you, they're going to Google you. And are you in control of what comes up when they do? So these are the things that we're going to uh, discuss in the departure lounge. Strategy defining a clear vision and a well thought out course of action, an understanding of what you need to and when 
why as well as how far, how all these pieces uh, fall together. So it's a broad vision of what you're doing with your life, setting a vision for your migration, not only leaving, but when you land. Communication skills, learning to be assertive, assertive and likable at the same time, communicate effectively in a way that will serve you uh, to win allies and influence uh, people. Uh, professional branding, creating and building a reputation as a professional in your field of expertise and how to represent yourself in a manner that will leave a lasting impression. This is where it really goes south. So by this, I want to invite you guys to step into the migration lounge, the departure lounge, where we are migrating differently. We're migrating to thrive and not just to survive. At this point, I wanna invite you guys to ask me some questions. <laughs> I'm just going to check the chat first. Um, there was background noise. Yes, I did see that. Okay, so if you have a question, now is the time uh, you may raise your hand or you may type it into the chat. Um, you may type it into the chat and let's have a conversation. Yes, David. Go ahead and unmute, unmute your phone, uh, your microphone, David. Okay, uh, I was saying that I recently got a job offer mm -hmm. uh, with some agents in Australia recently. Mm -hmm. uh, then they gave me an, 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 uh, two options. Mm -hmm. It said that to write my English uh, test is the IELTS or to, to get an English exemption uh, later from uh, my technical college in the, my high school. Right. Uh, Let's say uh, I missed this job offer. Would that work in uh, other job opportunities that I might uh, have uh, in the future? Or I would okay. to go through else? Okay, this is, language is pivotal. It doesn't matter where you're migrating to, language is pivotal. And as Africans, it's a little bit condescending. I know, how can they ask you if you speak English and yet your whole education has been in English, but this is something that we can't get away from. So either, uh, like they said, you will need an IELTS test um, or you will need the college that you went to to write a, a recommendation or uh, what's it called? Uh, a letter stating that you English. that your whole college studies was in uh, English and that you are able to <clears throat> speak English proficiently and communicate effectively. So it's kind of inevitable. If I were you, I would um, I would have it on the on the back burner always, always. It's one of those things that once you get okay. the job, you don't want to be found fumbling, like, okay, let me just get my eyelids in order or let me get my English test in order. It's one of those documents that we're talking about. These are some of the things that you need to have at hand because um, understand it goes pretty quickly. Uh, so we need proof that you speak English. You want to be able to say, bam, here it is. Okay, I thank you very much, uh, Mary. You're welcome. Um, Simbarashi says, I'm looking for a teaching job abroad. Kindly help me, which countries might have an opportunity. Um, Simbarashi, I have a contract with uh, schools in America, the education system in America, and they are looking to hire um, teachers from Zimbabwe, teachers from Africa. Uh, based on their training degrees. Teachers are a shortage skill. And so I think any country would actually work. Uh, so it breaks down to not looking like, not looking for uh, which would be the easiest, but think about which, would, which country would best suit you, which country would best suit your profile and then go for it. Teaching is a, is a shortage sector in, in, in all countries, even here in Europe. The only challenge with Europe is the language. <clears throat> uh, Trevor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mary. Confirm if I'm uh, audible. 
Yes. We can All right, hear thank you. you. Uh, so, okay, thank you. So I think I just have uh, maybe two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one is um, uh, is to do with the issue of um, uh, the educational visa. Um, mm -hmm. I understand there are some set uh, preconditions that you need to satisfy. Uh, for instance, uh, you need maybe to have maybe uh, proof of funding and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so my question to that is, um, uh, if if I want to use that route, um, are there any conditions to do with family? Uh, for instance, if I want to go together with my family, but uh, on an educational visa, mm -hmm. that's my first question. Mm -hmm. Then the second question is um, on the um, on the other route. Uh, like you said, we have got two types um, mm -hmm. of uh, maybe um, uh, migration in terms of uh, uh, the, the 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 job uh, visas whether you need to get a, a visa first uh, before a job, or a job first before a visa. So if I get a visa first before a job, uh, will I be able to uh, kind of um, relocate to that country before I get a job and then maybe look for a job uh, that side? And what are the preconditions to that? Okay. Uh, I think those are my two questions. Very good question. So you're talking about migration using the educational route and taking your family. Uh, I have one question for you. At what level uh, of education are you looking to uh, study? Uh, maybe a PhD or an MBA. PhD, okay. So I know definitely for a fact uh, with a PhD, because it's kind, of, uh, it's kind of a teaching position, it's kind of an employment position. Definitely with a PhD, it is possible. Um, to migrate with your family. With it, when it comes to MBA, uh, it's a little bit difficult uh, because then it depends largely on uh, what exactly uh, the funding, the amount of funding that you would be getting to support yourself. Would it be enough to bring your family with you? Uh, it also depends on the size of your family when you're talking about uh, a master at master's level, okay? So, if it's PhD, I would say run with it. Uh, run with a PhD because it makes it uh, a lot easier and less complicated. Also, given the fact that PhDs last longer than master's programs. So that would already be a plus. You can argue that I have to take my family with me. On the case of um, uh, visas, so this is how the system works you get, yes, they are visa first countries and you get um, pre-approved for a visa, okay? This doesn't mean uh, pack your bags and go today. So what, how it works is you get pre-approved for a visa and then based on that, you can start looking for jobs. If you find a job, then you can pack your bags and you can go. If you don't find a job, your visa expires and you have to reapply for a visa. So it's kind of a catch-22. You can't say I'm getting the visa and I'm just going to go without a job. They won't accept it. You need to have the job, effectively have the job before you can. That's why I was saying they're very closely intertwined and you can't have one without the other. Um, Anthony, can you please uh, mute your, um, your microphone uh, just so that we can communicate effectively? Um, I'm going to read one question here. What about degree evaluations by assets? Stating that my degree was done in English. Okay, I'm thinking you're probably alluding to proof of language proficiency. Um, the thing is, it depends on the employer, it depends on the country. And sometimes they will want, even though you have uh, proof that your degree was done in English, they will want you to do a language proficiency test. They'll want you to do IELTS or uh, a TOEFL. Um, I know that there are sometimes some ridiculous uh, rules. Uh, for example, I had a client who was a doctor and he wanted to go to the UK and medicine in Zimbabwe is taught in English for the longest of time, it's a long degree, but still they insist on IELTS. So sometimes I think I am, I am a big uh, supporter, I'm a big fan of kind of having your ducks in a row 
before you actually present yourself because it shows number one that you're organized and number two that you're <clears throat> so i would say yes it might be enough but it might not be enough so at the end of the day it's always good to have your eyelids on the back burner because then you don't limit yourself in terms of opportunities that you can you can reach out to um uh sungi sai go ahead Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can you confirm if I'm audible? Yes, we can hear you loud. Okay. okay, thank you. Let me go ahead. Uh, I'm an electrical technician and uh, mm -hmm. I've got uh, more than 10 years experience in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, I was trying to migrate to uh, Canada and, uh, and Australia. So for Canada, I did do a, what they call uh, that process of verifying verification of my educational certificates. Mm -hmm. I did uh, through they called WES. I don't know if you know it. Yes. Uh, but now, unfortunately, uh, as soon as just uh, after I completed the process, that's where we started this COVID thing. So my process just stopped there. Uh, I also did with the Australia. Now, on Australia, it was the same period again. Uh, I've done uh, what they said is uh, anti electrical. Uh, in, in fact, in Australia, they said there are some licensed trades and there are unlicensed trades. So, mm -hmm. for my electrical, it falls under licensed trade, which, need, which means I need to pass through some assessments. Mm -hmm. So, the first stage I have done, uh, and uh, I'm in the process of submitting my educational certificates for verification mm -hmm. and they quoted me a certain fee so my question now on both the uh, scenarios is does for the canada one does this waste thing expires since everything was stopped due to covid does it expire and uh, i got the results for waste my question my next question is what's the next procedure or what's the next step for me to okay. get the visa to canada the same applies to australia uh, I'm waiting to, actually they've given me the quotation uh, for the man to pay so that they can do the assessment of my educational certificates. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to ask from there, what's the next steps in both scenarios? And uh, can departure uh, launch uh, assist, how can you assist me uh, to get through either in one of the, the, the above uh, scenarios, either migrating to Canada or migrating to Australia. Thank you very much. Okay, if I understand you cor uh, correctly, you're asking about their procedure. Uh, you've been assessed in when, when it comes to Canada, you've been assessed yes. already and you have a yes. positive result. Yes. Okay. For the educational so, qualifications. For the educational qualifications. Yes. Uh, Actually, so, they even contacted my colleagues where I've done all my, my studies. They contacted them and they were sent the, tra what, what call it, the, those transcripts. So mm -hmm. everything was done and they gave me a positive uh, response. Mm -hmm. so and they didn't tell I, you what the next step was that I find very no, strange. No, only, only what we just do is they only do the verification. They right. only do the verification, which I did. Right. Yeah. So now you're waiting for, okay, so when they have verified your documents, the next yes. step is that they, they forward it to uh, the Canadian Council, where then they say, okay, this is the person, this is the profile. They're putting every, all this information into, um, into a file. And at the, end of the, at the end of the road, then they will be able to tell you how many points you have, and then you'll get an invitation uh, to submit uh, a visa application. You understand what so I mean? It, is it me who's supposed to apply for that one? Or was for which they only did was to assess my educational background and they gave me the certificate to say, according to the Canadian uh, level of education, yes, you qualify. are equivalent to this much. Yes, that's all, right. that's only all they did to me. Right. Yeah. But yes. WACE is an independent organization that is um, contracted by the Canadian government. Okay for that so so, so, so what, what, who what you need that? to go back to is the canadian government so i need to go to the canadian government yes you need to go back to the canadian government and say okay 
uh, what is the next step for me? This is my procedure. This is my, uh, my, my, my file. What is the next step for me? Okay. Okay. So uh, you, can you assist me in that case? We help you with communication. We help you with documents. We help you with finding which, which loopholes or which uh, angles that you can use to uh, boost your profile. So definitely that's something that we, that we can help with. Yeah. I would suggest, however, because otherwise it becomes kind of costly, I would suggest that you sit down and you think really hard, long and hard about which country you want to migrate to because this assessment will cost you. Australia, I know, will cost you. And understand that, yes, it's taken two years, but the world has been battling for a pandemic. But trust me, this is good news for us as Africans because it's kind of like that slingshot. It has been pulled back and pulled back and pulled back. And now it's about to fire because all these are coming out at the moment, all these vacancies. And uh, COVID was had two effects. Yes, a lot of people were devastated and they lost their lives, but uh, also a lot of people were, were, were made redundant. And that's why there are so many shortages. A lot of people can't work anymore in this part of the world, or they say they can't work anymore in this part of the world, but governments still need tax, taxes. They still need incomes. And that's why they are looking for to employ people from outside. So I would, if I were you, I would push, but I would push with one. Think long and hard, which one is it is that you want to pursue. And that's what clarity is about. Which one is it that you want to pursue and then give your energy 100% to that one. Okay. Yeah. What you what you are saying is is, is correct. Uh, initially, uh, I was I was trying to push for, for Canada because for Canada it was the uh, cheaper the migrating to Canada. But now the process uh, that's why I'm facing a challenge. That's why I had to change. To Understand? To you know, I, if I were you, if I had to make a choice, I would take Canada. If I were you. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I, my, my my first preference was Canada, but now I'm like I'm uh, I'm loved. I cannot. I, I don't know what the next step to take. For, Give for, it for Canada. Time. Let's talk in the departure lounge and let's figure it out. But I think uh, Canada is 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 a better option. Okay. okay. I'm going to read uh, a few more. I'm going to read one here and then I will uh, let somebody else ask. If I, I, if I write IELTS, do, it, do they expire? Yes, IELTS is two years. So you have two years and then you have to reset the exam unless you have already used it. Um, next question, do I have, uh, do you have direct links where I can open leave you finance and accounting vacancies that are eligible to us as uh, Zimbabweans? Okay. Um, I do have these links. Um, this is something also that we teach you in the di uh, departure lounge where you can look for these jobs. Um, but understand that this is one of the things that we teach you. Uh, we will teach you not only where do you find the job, but we will also teach you how to present yourself for these jobs when you are looking for them. Uh, since you have said Canada is among the job first countries, Canada is visa first, sorry. Any advice on the legit website that I can use? Also, I'm above 35 and I'm an accountant. Uh, I can't read it all, just a second. Also, I'm above 35 and I'm an accountant. What are my chances for securing a job? Okay, uh, Canada's cut off age, I think is 45. So you're still within the age range if you are on the good side of 45. <laughs> so uh, Canada's cutoff is 45. And once you're 45, you get zero points. But I would suggest that time is the enemy. So uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and if you're considering Canada, Canada is visa first. So like I was explaining to Sungisai, you have to go through that assessment first before you can look for jobs. So. I would suggest that you head over and you start looking for uh, getting yourself through that assessment. Hi, I got an HND um, educational level in civil engineering. However, the costs are to complete the migration are high. 
Uh, are there any sponsors helping to go through critical skills? Okay, this is a question that I get rather often. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you. Nobody is going to pay unless you can prove that you are such a hot shot at what you do. Unless you can convince me that you are number one superstar in what you do and I need you on my team, then I will pay. But otherwise I won't pay. Um, it's also kind of an I want you to look at it like investing in yourself. Uh, at the end of the day, whose life is going to become better? Um, yours. So at the end of the day, you want to give something so that you can get something. And I understand that it's not always easy. Trust me, I've been homeless at one point in my life. But um, even at that moment when I was homeless, I still invested money in courses in my own education. So I believe there's always something that you can do. Um, be careful of looking for that free ride because a lot of times that free ride is very costly in the end. A lot of people get trafficked. Uh, a lot of people get uh, bonded into contracts that are ridiculous. A lot of people um, uh, find themselves uh, in, in, in rather compromising situations simply out of desperation. So I think the best, the best mindset to have when you are approaching uh, migration is kind of fund yourself now so that you can benefit fully from your, for yourself later. Um, I can't read the name, AJ Chi. Aya, your, your hand is up. You may ask a question. Uh, okay, we're going to wait. Yeah. Hello? Okay, um, hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, my question is related to okay uh, agents that help um, that help uh, with, uh, with like uh, going going via the express entry. I'd like to know how I can uh, screen those uh, to know which which are legit. Uh, because it's, it's I'm, I'm not really sure how I go about the process. Uh, of going to Canada, especially um, assessing agents that can help you uh, with the process of uh, express entry. Okay. Express entry is based on your profile. Um, and I want you to understand very carefully uh, that you can apply for express entry by yourself. And this is uh, the disconnect that I have sometimes with a lot of uh, clients is the fact that people believe that when you give your money to an agent, they are going to do everything 100% and you're just going to wait. Yes, maybe they can do not 100%, they can do 50% and the rest you still have to do for yourself. But understand that, um, number one, it's going to cost a lot of money. Number two, it's something that you can do yourself. So okay. unless you feel like, okay, 50% of my energy is way too costly or it's, it's worth it, then I would suggest you do it yourself. But express entry is dependent on uh, your profile. It's dependent on um, uh, what skills that you have and how you apply. You can do it yourself. Yeah, that being okay. said... That and means then, that you may Google agents if you if you so please. Okay, I, I wasn't really sure um, how I go about it because um, I just uh, recently started uh, researching on on how I can go about uh, migrating to Canada. And then there are various ways. There's uh, express entry, and then there's uh, the options of applying for jobs uh, in places like Alberta. 
So I was trying to figure out how I go about the process. Okay. So I think that was the first that that was the first question that I had. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope I kind of gave you a little bit of clarity. Yes. Yeah, All right. Yes. I, okay. I think I understand. All right. Um, I'm going to read a question and uh, I welcome more questions. My question is of experience. I'm recently graduated student. I'm 27 years old with no experience yet considering I can't uh, get a graduate trainee job in Zimbabwe. Uh, is there a route I can take in terms of migration via getting a job or do I need to add more education skills? Um, Kudakwashe, I'm curious which sector that you're in. Um, um, why? Because sometimes uh, I feel like uh, there are some things that you can do depending on your um, on your uh, skill sets. I think your your hand is raised. Go ahead, Kudakwashe. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, I recently I was doing a biotechnology. I had a BSc in biotechnology, uh -huh. so it's more it's more it's more of, uh, uh, in the ethical in the health sector. Yes. I was majoring in the health sector mostly. Okay, so given that you were in biotechnology and that's also one of those major critical skills, uh, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes it difficult. But I don't think you're exempt from. I don't think uh, they will be strict on. Um, um the experience okay because of your age because you're 27 uh, but however i yeah. encourage you to so 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 what's what, what's the sorry go ahead yo so i was i was trying to ask you what's the best route i can take from now since i can't i can't get a graduate trainee job for for to get more experience so I don't know what's, what, what's the best route I could take. I would take my chances with um, uh, the educational route. Go for a master's, especially if you don't okay. have children. Um, yeah. yeah, I would go for the educational route. Go for a master's, try out for scholarships uh, in the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, I post a lot of scholarships. I send out um, a lot of scholarships. Also, you might want to think about self-sponsoring. Uh, education in Europe uh, as at master's level is not very expensive. It's very doable. And at master's level, it's always in English. So that's an alternative route that you might want to consider. Uh, so, so my last question is: uh, of all considering my profession, what's 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 the best country of choice that I could I could uh, look into? Bioelectrical. Oh, your your, especially in the wake of a of a COVID pandemic, <laughs> yeah. your options are pretty unlimited, don't you think? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Of course, it'll be. It's, 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 it's aligned to, to those kind of jobs uh, considering the COVID uh, pandemic. So I would I guess, say something uh, like this. Okay, uh, Pfizer is based in Belgium. Uh, Johnson & Johnson is also Belgium. Um, AstraZeneca, uh, I think it's German or is it Amer uh, uh, British? Uh, so what I'm trying to say is look for companies like this and target countries where these companies are. Okay, I'll definitely. I right. thank you so much. You understand? Okay. Yeah, um, I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Masia says I'm a plumber with electrical and electronics skills, looking for a job. Um, I would suggest Australia. Most of the time, they are taking a lot of people with your skills. Uh, what are the requirements for a company-sponsored visa, especially in engineering? Oh, I love this question. Why? Because just yesterday, um, just yesterday, I was in the Netherlands and I was talking to uh, an engineer in the Netherlands, and he told me that uh, they were giving me twelve um, vacancies for engineers. 
So they're looking for 12 engineers that they will bring over to the uh, Netherlands. They're looking for uh, electronics, I think, and computer uh, engineers, but I will post it later um, in the Netherlands. And usually what happens is depending on whether it's a visa first country or whether it's a job first country, uh, the, prob the question of um, company sponsorship is solved. So if it's a job first uh, country that you're looking to migrate to, for example, the Netherlands in this case, it's, it's job first. So if you have the job, then the visa, they will sort out for you. Um, when it comes to a visa first country, then you, the company will sponsor, you can negotiate it in your contract during the, um, the contract negotiations during the interviews. Um, and usually, depending on your negotiation skills, that's why we teach uh, uh, interview skills, depending on your negotiation skills, you can actually get them to sponsor you and to bring over your family. So this is something that you might want to look into, uh, Michael. Uh, let me hear from um, Amon. Yes, hello, how are you? Confirm if, if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right. Um, I, I, I'm a qualified electrician. I possess a national certificate in electrical power engineering. At the mm -hmm. same time, I hold a gentleman class one. So I would like to believe my situation in Sungisai is, is more or less similar. Mm -hmm. So I was opting for an educational route mm -hmm. um, uh, on how to migrate to, to Europe. So if you can assist, how best can I ponder the avenue? Since um, a national certificate is quite low, it's, it's, it's quite a lower qualification. And I don't know how do they embrace it in the Europe. Mm, this is a misconception. This is a very mm. big misconception. So a national certificate is technical college. I'll explain it this way. You have... Um, three years technical college, which is intensive practical, mostly mm -hmm. practical. And then you have four years, which is a bachelor's degree, which is intensely theoretical. But on the work floor uh, here, for example, in Europe, um, they, are, they are equal. The jobs that somebody does with a technical degree and the jobs that somebody does with a bachelor's degree are the same. The only difference will be in remuneration and in options of, of um, furthering or going higher up. So you'll find that for management positions, then they will, they will rather have somebody who has uh, a bachelor's degree. But to, to fill the vacancy, somebody with a technical degree has the same chances. Okay. It's All good right. news, uh, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, so I wanted to know, like um, a national certificate, um, they do vary a national certificate and uh, a degree. Mm -hmm. So if you can explain, how do they equate them in the, in the European Union? Uh, so a national certificate would be an associate degree. A higher national degree would be an associate degree. And a bachelor's degree, a higher national degree is three years, right? And a higher and a bachelor's degree is four years. So, but when it comes to looking for jobs, they are equal. Okay. In fact, in fact, some countries will actually prefer somebody with a technical degree because then you have the experience. Okay. All right. Um, but if I you should want to pursue the educational route, then I suggest that uh, you look into um, universities in Europe. But for this program, I don't think they would have, um, there would be very many uh, scholarship opportunities at uh, on the undergraduate level. There are not as many. Also, depending on your age. Um, so 
if I were you, I would look for, I would look at the employment route. You are underestimating okay. the, the value of your degree, of your qualification. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, to, thanks very much. You're welcome. I'm going to read a few more um, uh, questions and then I will, I will hand over to Kevin. Um, Events management, PR jobs available abroad. I only have certificates for those sectors. I have, I have a little bit of bad news uh, because events management and public relations are not on the shortage skills sector, um, shortage skills list. Uh, so it will be very difficult to find a job unless you have that wow factor, uh, unless you can prove you are a superstar. Um, and then you go in on a rec recommendation. Uh, trained as an apprentice, that's Tawanda, uh, with one year college certificate as a chef and four years work experience. Uh, do you have any websites for companies that are recruiting for chefs in Canada, Australia? Um, chefs are on the critical skills list of Canada, of America, of the EU, they are on the list. Uh, the differentiating factor becomes like I said, if you're looking at Canada, it's visa first first, and then the job. So you would have to get the visa first, be eligible for the visa and then find the jobs. Just finding a job would not serve you in Canada or Australia. Um, so it's important guys. Um, that's why we're talking about clarity. It's important to follow the procedure, to follow the steps because much as a lot of agents would like you to believe there is no um, back door when it comes to the first world. There are no back doors. Everything is done in the right channels. And 90% of the time you can do it yourself uh, unless you feel like giving your money away. Uh, and it just depends on the quality of what you present. Have as many injuries, they just can't be asked. Yeah, sure. Um, unless, and it depends on the quality of what you present. And that's where the departure lounge comes in because what we're working, we're not promising that we are going to do things for you, no. We are promising that we will help you improve that quality and get you that visibility that we are talking about. Most of the time, that's the question. Can they see me? And why can't they see me? And 90% it breaks down to your strategy, your vision, your presentation, and the way you communicate. And that's what we fix. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. Hello, Mary, thank you. You're welcome, go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I, I wanted to ask, you know, me, I'm a mechanical engineer uh, profession, but age-wise, I fall outside the bracket, uh, like for Canada, you're talking about, because I'm 50, 50 plus. Mm -hmm. But um, someone with a lot of experience in terms of the work I've done, what I'm doing. And I wanted to find out because I was of the opinion that as much as some of these countries might have um, age limits, they do have, um, what do you call it, projects that are going on in their countries where they need or they might need experienced people. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, um, which countries uh don't look into the issue of age but look into the issue of experience for someone to come in and be a, a, a starter i mean to come in and and, and 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 just be part of the team you know right not not, not starting like a, a fresh person so you're looking into consultancy mostly okay um what about um construction projects that are going on, especially in the first world? The problem is, I'll explain to you why there's an age cutoff. Okay, so like I said, the, the age of retirement is 67 years, 65 or 67 years here, right? When you move countries, when you move continents especially, your pension doesn't carry, okay? And here they are very, they have a very strong um, social system whereby everybody, every person who turns 65, 70 should be guaranteed a pension. It's, it, it, 
aids to keeping the standard of living, to keeping the, the, the level of uh, poverty low here, okay? So when you move at 50, understand that, yes, you have your experience. Yes, you have your knowledge, your degree. But the problem is um, the salary, also one more important thing, the salaries that they pay here are, are, are earned and are increased with the years of experience that you work. So if you start in a company today um, and you work for 10 years, every year, your salary increases. When you move companies, you've worked for 10 years for this company and you move to the next country, to the next company, the company can't take over completely all those 10 years. It will take over eight years. So you will be paid as somebody who has eight years of experience because they can't afford to pay somebody who's starting with the 10 years of experience that they have. And this goes on and on and on. Now, if you're 50, you have almost 25 or 20 years of experience going on, right? And the problem is, um, if you were already here and having a worked 20 years, your income bracket would be something in the range, maybe let's say you're an engineer. If you're 20, you've worked for 20 years, your income bracket would be somewhere in the range of 10, 11,000 uh, euros per month, okay? That's great. But uh, when they are taking you from outside and bringing you ab abroad, um, they can't pay you that much money. Meanwhile, uh, you have only five or only 15 years to build up a pension. And the basic pension that they have here starts at 40 years. So you have to have worked 40 years to get a minimum pension. So you have two things working against you. The salary that you would earn when you are here is not equal and it's not representative of the uh, amount of experience that you have, that's number one. And the second thing is uh, the amount of years that you have to build up your pension are not enough to build a sustainable pension. So they won't take a gamble on somebody that age. Not that they don't need the experience, but then they would opt for, let's say if you come in as a consultant, then they would opt for that. But a consultant means somebody who is self-employed and who, um, who is on a different kind of visa, an entrepreneurial visa. And that's something that then you have to really think about uh, whether it's feasible for you. Um, what I normally advise when I have people who are in your situation, I ask them to look at uh, the next generation, uh, look at um, somebody in your vicinity who you could mentor and raise up uh, with these values so that they can go and work and support back home. That's what I usually advise when I'm approached by people who are in this age bracket. Uh, thank, thank you very much for, for the info. Okay. I hope it helps. Yeah, 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 you clarified it. Okay. Um, a question from Boyce, but Boyce, you have your hand up. You can ask your question, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to appreciate, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I wanted to just appreciate this platform and probably ask that uh, if one wants to engage you, what's the procedure from here? Uh, is there a way of setting an appointment and are there any charges? How do we proceed? And then are you in a position to assist? Uh, my wife has got a master's degree in counseling psychology and I have a first degree in accounting with 10 years experience. Mm -hmm. So we were set to look into Australian job market and uh, we wanted to find out if that is possible and uh, whether there's also scholarships for us that can be looked into. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, first of all, to answer your question, yes, I, I am available on appointment. If you go to my website, um, you can book a, a, a migration uh, coaching session. Um, however, the cost is rather high. And that's why uh, my colleague Sandra and I have thought about doing it in this way, uh, the departure lounge, uh, because then we can assist more people uh, at the same time. So that's number one. If you are interested, you can always send me an email um, for a one-on-one -on -one session and we can set it up. 
uh, when it comes to uh, your wife and yourself, um, uh, counseling and psychology, and she has a master's. Um, I have one question. Does she have experience in counseling and psychology? Yeah, in experience of one year. One year. Okay. Um, uh, when it comes to scholarships, I don't know if there would be any, I don't know what angle uh, you would get the scholarships because uh, for this um, this specific study, uh, counseling and psychology, there are not very many scholarships available. Most of the scholarships that, and this is the, the reason why uh, foreign countries are, uh, first world countries are looking to employ from outside, uh, there's a shortage in STEM. So even when it comes to uh, scholarships, they are more, centered, they are more directed at STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's what they're looking for. And that's where they will channel most of their resources, even when it comes to scholarships. That being said, um, I think there is potential for your wife, uh, especially um, to uh, secure a job as counselor uh, or a social worker. A social worker, I think would be um, maybe may right up her alley, but I'm not so sure about Australia. Um, what I do know is that uh, the UK might be a better option when you're looking at your wife's degree. Um, uh, are you in a position to assist me to get contr employment contracts? We facilitate. So this is what we do. There are some occasions where people come to me and they say, uh, we're looking for this, uh, do you have people? Um, and if I have your, uh, your file on record, then I can, I can forward it. Um, but at the moment, I don't have anything in this sector, but we facilitate. So what do I mean by facilitate? Like I said, with the coaching program, we help, help you gain clarity. We help you sell yourself. We help you find these jobs. We help you prepare for these interviews and uh, help you get them, uh, get the placement. So that's where I come in. Uh, and I hope that this answers your question. Um, I don't really have much more than that. Are you answered, boys? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. If you need some information or some guidance or a one-on-one -on -one session, just send me an email. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can PET be a substitute for IELTS? Huh, I had a webinar about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, most of the time, no, it can't. <laughs> um, IELTS is the uh, governing body. So I would say just get an aisle. Sometimes I know it's about, about price, but you don't want to pay for something that won't be recognized. Just pay for the aisles, do it once, and it's, it once should be enough, you know? Um, second question, I have submitted my IELTS base uh, to an immigration lawyer. My profile was submitted to the immigration CIC, and I have been told I qualify for territories. How long will it take to be nominated? That's that's very dependent on the Canadian government and the backlog that they have. Um, yeah, it's very dependent. I, I, I don't have an answer to that question. Um, also, because, you know, uh, the COVID pandemic has changed a lot of things and it has slowed down a lot of things. There are a lot of places with backlogs. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I can't answer that question, and only the Canadian government would be able to do that. Um, uh, let me hear from uh, Vumani. Thanks, Mary. Uh, what I wanted to find out is on the Canadian immigration, uh, mm -hmm. because someone once mentioned that you also need a big bank account with... I think uh, it's uh, uh, about thirty uh, about thirty thousand on your bank. Is uh, is that something that applies? 
no, <laughs> no, no, no. It, de it depends on the kind of visa that you, you're looking for, but with the kind of visas that we're looking, looking at, no, you don't need 30,000 on your bank account because yeah, then otherwise the only people who would be able to migrate would be super rich. <laughs> I don't know how many people have 30,000 in their bank account. I don't have 30,000 in my bank account. So no, I think that's some misinformation. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, but uh, in terms of uh, like for for Canada, let's say for an IT professional, uh, if you want... oh, you're breaking up, Fumani. Hello. Okay, I think Fumani, come back when your internet is back. I will come back to you because I could, I, I didn't understand the question. Uh, let me have Nyasha. Go ahead, Nyasha. Hi guys, I'm sorry, something's going on with the network. I just want to encourage you guys before you leave, um, I'm just going to talk about this. This is the last thing that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, and then I will continue to take questions. Um, so this is the last thing I'm going to share with you guys. So I've talked about the departure lounge uh, and I've told you guys what we do. And um, if you've read about the departure lounge, you'll know that uh, uh, what we were asking, what we are asking is uh, 600 euros, which is a fraction of what we normally charge for uh, one on one, six on six hundred. But simply because you are here, I have a gift for you guys, and the gift is I'm giving away scholarships of up to seven hundred seventy five percent of up to seventy five percent for the departure lounge. So uh, if you're interested in the scholarship, uh, all you have to do is to uh, send. Um, uh, 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 give me feedback on the presentation, give me feedback on this session, and uh, we will contact you and tell you what your scholarship, what you have won and which scholarship you have won. Okay, I hope this is clear. So this is something for you guys, just because you are here and I appreciate the fact that you are here. Uh, I seem to have lost, no, I haven't lost the question. So I'm just going to keep answering questions. Um, let me hear Paul. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Paul. Uh, I'm very, very well. So I am, um, I'm an accountant mm -hmm. uh, with an upper secondary class. And I'm also studying ACA uh, Association. So just wanted to ask, um, what are the odds of me migrating to Europe considering my educational background and uh, qualifications? Because I've been through many websites and uh, trying to look for opportunities to migrate to Europe. So I just wanted to find out from you, um, what are the odds for me to migrate to Europe? Okay, uh, yours is a very specific uh, field. Um, and the problem with Europe is there is a language barrier. So uh, most of the time you would have to uh, be able to speak the language. I'm just going to get my charger. Um, you would have to be able to speak the language in order to get a, a, a job offer from a European uh, accounting agency. That being said, it is it is a very critical shortage skill sector. Um, and I would say if you're really interested in Europe, then learn a language and then apply after you have at least a B1 in, the, in a European language. Okay, that's fine. So um, the, the, the ACA, it's, um, it's offered by UK body, which is mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. So I thought maybe that would give me, I mean, 
an advantage since I'm studying with something that is offered by a UK body. That would give me an advantage in terms of the English language. Yeah, the problem with uh, Europe is the language, like what you're saying. Uh, and English is great, but it's not a language. It's not an official European language. Most European countries don't speak it officially. So unless you would be working for one of the uh, big corporations, you know, PwC uh, and stuff like that, uh, it might not serve you. And even then, if you were, uh, simply because uh, most of your clients would be uh, people who speak local languages or companies that are manned by people who speak local languages, uh, it might become a, a challenge and a barrier. Okay. If, if it's any consolation, I think um, this is one of those things that you have to uh, think about when you're trying to relocate. Um, I think you might be, you might have better chances if you direct to an English speaking country. Okay, uh, okay, that's fine. I hope it. I hope uh, it helps provide a little bit of clarity. Uh, yeah, it helps. It really helps. Thanks so much. You're welcome, um, David. Go ahead. Hello. Okay, uh, Lewis. Go ahead. Uh, hello, am I okay? I'll just do the, the common thing. Am I audible? Um, yes, very lightly, but yes, go ahead. Okay, I hope you hear the question. I, I just wanted to ask about opportunities for a 36 year old male, which is me, obviously, uh, with, a, with a degree in mechanical engineering and uh only three years of experience wishing to migrate to specifically Canada. Why, what, what would be your advice to such a person? I would say join the departure lounge because we're looking for people like you. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. You have a great degree. You have the, the minimum requirement of, uh, of uh, language. You're in, a, you're in the right age group. Uh, at the end of the day, I think your chances are very good. Okay, okay, no. Thank, thanks a lot. Uh, and if it's just guidance that you need on which direction to look, then yeah, we're here. Okay, no, yeah, that's all, that's all I want. To By the way, did I mention that if you send feedback, you're going to, you stand a chance to win a scholarship for the departure lounge. Um, let me hear from, from, uh, there was a lady called Paula. Okay. Let me hear from, from, uh, David. Hello, David. Okay. Or we're going to hear from Nyasha. We're going to slowly wind it down, guys. Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi, Nyasha. I'm fine. Thanks. How are you? I'm all right. Thanks. I hope you can hear me. The networks in Zimbabwe are pretty bad. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. No, it's just a quick one. Um, I have a marketing degree and a sales background. Mm -hmm. So I know... It's most likely for Canada, automatically for someone with an engineering, they would be more, uh, um, they would uh, easily, they would, it would be easier for them to get a job than me. So mm -hmm. any pointers to where I can maybe look for uh, jobs with my uh, skill set? And also, sorry, the other question is my mm -hmm. wife has a degree in safety and health. And then Oshimak uh, postgrad qualification. So, 
we would maybe looking for either me or her or both of us uh, apply for some way where we can go together. Uh, that's it. That's and also when we send the feedback. Sorry for the scholarships. <laughs> oh, the feedback. The feedback. You guys will receive an email at the end of the session. You'll receive automatically an email, and there is a form in there. So you just feed fill in the feedback form, and uh, I will notify you when you get an, a scholarship. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So given that your wife has got a safety and health. Uh, degree i think she's your your number one to migrate uh i have bad news because uh pr degrees are not in short supply and the problem with pr is you know it's kind of like a, a, a dare if you are so good at pr show me what you've got you know what i mean um uh -huh. so um I'm, I think your your best option would be to push for your wife to migrate and then you follow or you uh, you move together on her uh, qualification. That being said, uh, Canada, great. Uh, UK, also very great for safety and health. Uh, Australia, US, practically anywhere. Um, yeah, it's one of those jobs. Okay. Are you answered? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe let's let's see if we can uh, maybe push for somewhere. In Canada seems the most uh, attractive for guys. To be honest, reason, I, guess. I live in Europe. Um, and it has been a long road. I had to fight to learn the language. I learned the language twice because I've lived in two European countries. So I speak Greek and I speak Dutch. And I had to fight to learn the language and that takes a lot of time. And then after learning the language, converting all your skills into this language, it takes a lot of effort. If I had had the option of Ooh. doing all this in English, I would have done it. I will be very honest with you. Um, so if the option is there to speak English, I would say that's go for it, but go for it in a way that you only have to go for it once, <laughs> you know, join the departure lounge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Awesome. Uh, let me hear from uh, Munashi. Munashe. Okay, we'll move on. Hello. Hi, Hello, Munashe. can you hear me? Hi, hi. Yes, yes, uh, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, um, how are you? Yes, just a, a, a short one. Um, when you're applying for uh, visa first, uh, I mean, visa first countries uh, through critical skills, uh, does uh, I mean when you have a relative or does not a relative to a country where you want to go, does it affect um, the application for a visa or it doesn't? I mean, in terms of it, costs, it, you're talking in terms of cost, you're talking about a visa first country, yes, yes, like if I, you're applying I go for to, visa first country and you have a relative there, it's a plus point, it's a plus point, it's definitely okay, a plus so point. You have Okay, so they should they should be part of your visa application. Like you should, should know where they are staying and should have more information about them. Mm, I would say it's not in the sense that you're going to be dependent on them because yours is an individual, but in the sense of of showing that you have some some support in that country. Yes, and okay. it definitely oh. helps if you know where they stay. If you have uh, proof of well, not necessarily a uh, proof of uh, how you guys are related or the type of relationship that you have and the closeness of this relationship, then that definitely is a plus point, especially when it comes to uh, visa interviews. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's what I was uh, uh, want to ask about. Okay, Munashe, I hope you're answered. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I've been listening to all conversation and I've been following through. So that's the only part I wanted to find out. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Uh, let me hear Samsung. <laughs> I, I, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. I, um, uh, apologies for that. Uh, I think I forgot to sign in with my, my real name. No worries. Anyway, uh, all right. So my, my question is, um, earlier I had posted on, on the, on the chat. Uh, I did, uh, the IELTS, uh, I think I've been eight and I did the West. Um, I, I, I then had to redo it again because it had expired. So in terms of applying on the websites, um, you know, there's that cutoff points. Uh, I think they were taking 420 and uh, my points uh, were getting to around 390. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to choose the, the path of going through some immigration lawyers. Uh, that's what I'd been advised by someone else. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my question now is, uh, um, uh, how then can I raise my points? My wife, uh, she did, um, she has a master's degree in strategic communication. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we are, we are uh, we're a profession because I'm an, in, I'm an engineer by profession. Mm -hmm. So it's like for uh, when I was checking for on the website, where we're, um, like we're a restricted profession, you need mm -hmm. to be registered. But now for me to get registered there, um, I have to sit for an exam in Canada. But mm -hmm. for me to go to Canada again, I think I'll need a visa to get there. So I don't know how to go around it. I think uh, that's my question. How do you go about it on this? Um, there aren't any centers that you can uh, use that are outside the country, outside of uh, Canada. Because usually they um, also have no, satellite I'm... stations where you can probably write that exam. Okay. Uh, I've never heard of any, but maybe it's, it's a start something that I might check as well. And your lawyers, but, uh, they, what, I needed. what do they advise? Uh, they just said um, you qualify for, um, what do you call, for the territories. And they asked if I want to go into that nomination pool. And I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. But up to now, nothing has, has come up. It takes a while. Almost six months now. Yeah, right. it takes a while sometimes. Um, you know what I, I advise, that's why I feel like, uh, we take, we take strategy a little bit too for granted because understand that you have one opportunity to make that first, that killer first impression. So make sure that it's that impression that's going to, uh, carry you through. So I'm a little bit, um, against the idea of let me try first and then um, see how to fix it along the way. Uh, so I don't know how you can, you can increase your points uh, or your uh, eligibility once you've already applied. Once they already have you on file with this information. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I do get it. Yeah. Um, that being said, you might want to just to keep your options open uh, and try uh, Australia uh, or the UK. But whatever, yeah, option I've been considering. That, whatever option that you choose, um, I advise try and make it, try and knock it out of the ballpark before you actually on paper before you actually submit. You know that saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression? Well, make that first impression memorable. All right. Fix everything before you start. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, let me hear from Mutsa. Hi, Mary, and thank you for the session. Uh, I asked the question earlier. 
and you, when you responded, you, you spoke about uh, getting assessed for points and stuff. I would want to know where you get that done. Like, uh, can you just get it done on any website or what organizations do that? I am not familiar with the process. Right, you're talking about the Canadian visa. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I should have mentioned that. It yes, is, yeah. So the assessment is done on the government website for uh, the Canadian uh, uh, migration. You, there is a place where you can uh, start the process for the visa. So if you go to the visas, there is a place where you can um, start your assessment. And it's only the Canadian government. And then they, the, the West assessment is something that's individual, that is used by the Canadian government. That's an individual body that then assesses your educational qualifications. But assessing your whole profile is done by the Canadian government. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Joseph? Hi, Mary. Thanks for the session. You're welcome. I, okay, I just have two questions. Uh, the first one is like, um, I'm a 41 year old uh, guy. I'm an engineer, an industrial engineer by profession. But my first uh, profession is like, I'm a qualified tradesman, a mm -hmm. fit and tenor. Mm -hmm. So the first one, I want to know which one is likely to give me more points. And the second one, probably, which one will give me quicker, quicker results, in probably with the less complicated <laughs> way, which qualification may I use if, to do the, 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 to start the process of going either Australia or Canada? Joseph, my Thank question you. for you is, do you want to, what is your motivation? What is, what do you hope to achieve by migrating? <sighs> Well, I would say um, it's mainly looking for greener pastures. I'm, right. I'm a technical person. I'm, yeah, yes. So if you're looking for greener pastures, automatically the engineer route is better. It will okay. take you, okay. it will take you, it's, it's a field where they are actually actively looking for engineers on all across the board. So they're looking for engineers. And um, automatically when you land, your, your income bracket is, is different from that of a fitter turner. Okay. You understand? Okay. So in my opinion, no, I, get, getting I don't think it would be, it might be, even if it was a little bit more difficult, more complicated to go the engineering route, I still would I still would stick with it because like I said let's not migrate from a position of desperation you know because at the end of the day we find ourselves stuck and we sell ourselves short so don't sell yourself short you're an engineer walk with your head held held high yes it might be a little bit more complicated maybe but I don't think so that it might be more complicated than being a fitter tenor but at the end of the day this is your qualification and you earned it. So why not use the full qualification? No, thanks very much for the advice. I think I get you loud and clear. It's is very clear now. Yeah. So just, just go the engineer route. Thanks so much for your, for your time. We'll, we'll meet on the feedback of the of the whole session. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, blessing, go ahead. Go ahead, Blessing. Um, hello, hi. Hi, Blessing. We can, can hear, hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so far, so far. I think, I think, I think it's, uh, the session was very informative. Um, my request is, uh, 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 can, you, can, you, can, can, you, can you do this probably once or twice a year again before the year ends? So probably we can bring back the feedback uh, that, would have, that would have gone through. And Definitely. I think, 
can still benefit from 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 these sessions right eh? definitely definitely let's do this again uh in the near future i was actually talking to my colleague sandra she couldn't be with us today because she is uh on the ground uh in zimbabwe on a fact fact finding mission we will call it so uh she's unavailable uh normally she's based in germany um and we were talking about it and we said, yeah, this is something that we at least owe our people. So uh, we will definitely be doing this more often. Oh, that's fine. Thanks, eh? You're welcome. Chido, go ahead. And I will take David as the last question. Hello, Chido. <coughs> okay, go ahead, David. Okay, sorry, once again, Mary. I am very glad with uh, the proceedings of the, the program. Uh, I just have three last questions, which I mm -hmm. just want to ask. Uh, the first one is, uh, do you have the direct links that's, that can that can connect me to uh, employers who are ready to fund or to to sponsor uh, in the whole process of uh, uh, migrating papers uh, to Germany, Australia, or Canada. Then, secondly, uh, how do we? Because uh, in my job searching, I've uh, met uh, a lot of uh, agents and uh, different uh, people, uh, giving me different conditions and uh, situations. I just want to ask if we ever, or if you might uh, give us a hint on how do we uh, verify if uh, these agents are real or they are scammers. Because as you can see, there are a lot of people who are doing digital tricks uh, on internet, especially for desperate job seekers. Mm. Then lastly, I just want to ask uh, you on a private, uh, on, depart on departure launch, uh, how much do you actually charge for one on v or one, one on one uh, sessions? I think uh, those are the questions that I may uh, I, I'm asking. Okay. Uh, thank you for your questions. The first question is on funding for um, job seekers for the migration, funding the whole migration process. I will link this question with the one on how do you verify? Uh, because some things that people promise are too good to be true. If you've come across an agent who will tell you they're linking you with sponsors who will sponsor the whole procedure, it should ring alarm bells for you. Yes, they're willing to meet you halfway, but they're willing to meet you halfway on a procedure that you've started yourself. Um, this is something that I will tell you guys before you land the first world, there is nothing for free. There's nothing, 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 except for sunshine when it shows up. But I always encourage people, number one, don't be desperate. Even if you are desperate, don't let the world know that you are desperate because you make yourself vulnerable for uh, exploitation and manipulation. So whenever somebody offers you something that's too good to be true, alarm bells. Employers who fund you and fund the whole process, alarm bells. Nobody's going to do that. What I encourage is that you start the process yourself. You know, the saddest thing for me is uh, that a lot of people believe that it's so difficult to migrate it's so difficult, it's almost impossible. And I believe like the truth is it's not really, it's not really, really difficult. It's just finding the right places, finding the right information and following the procedure. And sometimes, unfortunately, the procedure takes a while, like especially after the COVID pandemic, like we've heard about people who are waiting for uh, nominations. Um, sometimes it takes a while. But in the meantime, do something to, to build yourself. Do something that when, when like I spoke about the catapult, when, 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 when the time comes that you're shooting forward. Um, 
I don't have any links. That being said, I don't have any links for sponsors who will sponsor the whole procedure for you. Um, and when it comes to uh, agents who are verified, um, also something that I, I'm going to say it, but uh, I've dealt with so many people who have been trafficked uh, in my lifetime that I do not have any confidence in um, um, agents who are on the African continent sometimes purporting that they will get you abroad. If you can do it, why aren't you there? I, will, I always think to myself, I have a lot of people who have been brought by so-called agents and kind of been uh, sold or been trafficked basically into some circumstances and situations that you just think it would have been better off if you had stayed at home. Yes, you were a little bit, it was not, it was not ideal, but you had your freedom and you had your, your dignity. So don't be desperate guys. Um, as for my charges, um, I do charge for one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, for a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, I charge uh, $50, but, uh, if you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one and you are interested in a discount, because I, I do do, um, promotions for people, especially who, who keep coming back. Uh, so for example, if you feel, fill in a feed feedback form and we notice that your, your name keeps popping up, uh, you interact with us, then of course, then I, I am more inclined to give you a discount. Uh, and who knows, maybe a freebie. <laughs> so uh, just keep the interaction coming. And, and, and if you really need a one-on-one, -on -one, let's talk in my email, in my email inbox. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. You're welcome. Uh, let me hear Chido. Are you answered, David? Yeah, I'm answered. I believe I'm answered. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. Let me hear from Chido. Hi, Mary. Sorry about that. My network just dropped. No problem. Um, I wanted to ask on behalf of my brother. He applied for a visa, a graduate visa in Australia. It's specifically for chemical engineers, mm -hmm. but he hasn't uh, heard anything back from them. Ch uh, checking the progress of the of the visa, it's still on submitted. It hasn't been. It hasn't gone through the initial assessment first, or anything like that. So. Would you have any advice for him? He couldn't join because he's not feeling well, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. would you have any advice or which route for him to take? Okay. Um, first of all, if you're waiting for a visa from Australia, then I would, I would say hang in there because they only opened their borders at the beginning of uh, this year. After three years, completely locked out of the world. So you can imagine what kind of a backlog that they have. So hang in there. Um, it will come, it might come a little bit late, uh, but if he's in chemical engineering I and he's looking to go to school, I am all for studying in Europe. That's the best thing that you can do, especially at graduate level. It's the best thing you can do because um, they are cheaper, they have a lot of scholarships that they give out, even not just the government itself, but universities give out a lot of scholarships as well. Uh, so at graduate level, try Europe, just try. Uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, uh, uh, Germany, uh, France, just try. Um, there are a lot of scholarships that they give out and they are, their uh, fees are also in comparison to Australia or uh, the rest of the first world, they are they are so low. So that's just my tip. I hope this helps, Chido. Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Wisdom and then Achijia. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, I'm more things so that I came a little bit late. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, we've heard my nieces are going back, and I 
UK, Canada. What's really happening there? Can you enlighten, can you enlighten me? Nurses or nurse aides? Nurses and nurse aides, yeah. Okay, because those are two different categories. So a nurses, nurses are, um, both are actually shortage skills, nurses. Um, and for a nurse, it's easy because uh, they're in high demand at the moment and uh, the health sector is facilitating and speeding up the, their migrational process and the processing of their papers. Uh, and in the UK, they get sponsors, especially for nurses, um, and they, they can go very quickly. Um, however, when you are migrating as a nurse, um I'm, I'm i'm going to say it uh try and get something that's not in the nhs because the, the conditions of working and the the salary is not uh compatible to the the private sector so if you're a nurse uh try and find um sponsorships or jobs that are not in the nhs although the nhs is the biggest employer but yeah it's the conditions are not are not great uh that being said nurse aids i know that this is a wave that's hit kind of zimbabwe at the moment and the saddest thing for me is sometimes when people with skills that are also on the shortage uh list uh opt for the nurse aid wave simply because they hear it's faster uh to migrate as a nurse aid you need experience guys uh, without experience, any medical certificate doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Ask any doctors. Yes, they graduate from university and then they have to work Inside. under- So yes. I'll check with you, right, you know. Hello? Okay, so yeah. Um, that being said, experience, like I said, uh, that's a key factor um when it comes to nurse aides I'm, I'm unfortunately i'm not i'm not uh helping in that sense i'm not uh targeting any nurse aides i'm not i'm not uh, recruiting helping recruit nurse aides because i find i find that it's a difficult uh sector and a lot of people end up um in semi-traffic situations so i would rather not associate my name or my brand with that uh, in that, yeah, I hope you're answered. Um, I'm going to take the last question and that's from AJ Chi Chihia, I think. Yeah, okay, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Yes. Um, uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Um, I think firstly, I, I would like you, I, I would like to remind you that she had uh, said uh, at the end of the discussion, we're going to share um, uh, opportunities uh, in Netherlands for IT and engineering uh, jobs. I think, uh, yeah, I think yes. that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I have. Yes, definitely. I have jobs, um, but understand the contract that I have with uh, these uh, places. So, like I'm saying, the biggest okay. disconnect that people have uh, in the first world is how people apply for jobs. And what I'm facing is I have employers on one hand who are saying, yes, we're looking for people, but give us profiles, give us CVs, give us uh, people okay. uh, that are compatible that we can present you understand and on the other okay. hand and that's yes, why yes. I, I i we set up this departure lounge because a lot of the times um the cvs and the profiles are not something that you can present which is the reason why they are not being uh noticed or the reason why okay. they are not visible so if you go through the departure lounge i have uh somebody who's recruiting teachers i have somebody who's recruiting it uh it 
um, engineers and IT specialists. I have somebody who's recruiting engine, uh, engineers, um, electrical and electronic engineers. Um, I have somebody who's recruiting nurses uh, as well. And these are the jobs that I do have that are here and are waiting and are just somebody who says, okay, show me people who are alumni from your from your program and we will give them these positions and we present them to us. And this is the reason why I've set up this departure lounge because a lot of the time that's the dis biggest disconnect that people are not visible and they're not visible because the, f the formatting of their CVs is wrong. Uh, you can't find them online or if you find them online, you find them or uh, if you Google them, you find them, uh, you know, dancing in some, I don't know, on YouTube or something, which is something that conflicts with the personal, with the brand okay. of, of, of the company. So this is what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, I, I, I understand. You understand? Okay, great. I okay, I'm going to take the last question yeah, and then... I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Okay. Go ahead, Mushanguri. And that's the last question. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So um, I joined the app a bit late, so I just wanted to ask uh, maybe if you could uh, maybe share the, um, the recording of, the, of this session, so that maybe we can go through it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. Uh, I will be sharing it. It will be available on YouTube uh, tomorrow on my YouTube. If you go to Mary Razemba on YouTube, uh, it will be available. So I want to thank you guys so much uh, for joining. Uh, and remember to send your feedback because uh, there is a scholarship at play. Um, so not a scholarship. There's quite a few scholarships. Um, uh, for 75% uh, off discount on the departure lounge. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you guys next time. We will definitely be doing this again. Um, and I hope to see your feedback. Just let me know what you thought about the session, what you would like to see included. Um, and just information, just let me know what's, what you're thinking, okay? so. Until next time, thank you so much for joining and I will see you guys on the other side. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.